You have done a lot of directing pre-screen. I'm going to call it pre-screen era and post-screen, right? Screens are phones, screens are tablets, screens are screens are Kindles, they're all of that. You have directed in the pre-screen era and the post-screen mm -hmm. era. How we view life through screens, through communication, through Facebook and meta, and da 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 da, is we know it's changing perceptions and interactions mm -hmm. and how we pace our interactions and what we expect from our interactions. Is that coming into the theater? I know the phones come out. You know, I'm bored in Act Two, and the phone you can see. I, there was one show I could tell. I could tell who was winning in the hockey game by the number of phones in the audience. You know, I could tell if Montreal was winning, I could because they listened more and Montreal was losing, nobody listened, they were all on their phones. Yeah. So <laughs> but the screen is actually changing some of our interactions. Do you see that in the theater? And if so, how do you cope with that, adjust with that? Or do you just ride with it? Well I mean I think it's valuable. I I, I I've done a lot of film and T V as well on that other side of the camera as well. So I bring that to the table. I, I like what a lens can do. I, I, I like the fact that sometimes we want to be focused like it could be on a phone, that people are looking at an action. So, so let, let, let me see if I can articulate this. So when we look at a phone, and you know, because when we do our things called what we call electronic press kits, and we do our our um, promo for our shows, we have to now be mindful of how that is shot and blocked because it has to fit on a phone, right. as opposed to just on a TV or a, on a movie theater. And it's interesting to me because we're so used to looking at this, and the, and it's instructive, or iPads. So if we're focused like that, there's no reason we can't sometimes focus scenes like that. And so that sometimes I like to look at from the perspective of the audience that it's a lens. And so I zero in like it is there. So I think it's useful. I think it's useful because it get, becomes laser focus. It's, it's not a lot to look at. It's a screen. The downside of, of, of screens in the theater and, and people using phones, and, and I mean, what can you do about that? Nothing. Um, is that people want instant uh, stimulation. So when you pull up TikTok and there's, you know, and I do too, I look at it and, oh, that's amazing. That's an amazing image. It's funny, it's this, it's, it's people are doing content to show something quickly. It's whether we're losing the ability for audiences to I don't know if this is probably not the right term, but patience of waiting for action to unfold, of, you know what I mean? And it's that, that to me is the, the thing that concerns me a little bit, that we're losing audience's ability because we've stimulated so much quick, like quickly, um, an instant result that we, we kind of maybe get anxious and we want things to happen. You know, where we can just yep. sit back and go, okay, I'm just going to let this unfold. I don't know. I, I, it's, it's a great question. You are describing the world outside. I have to have political p opinions now. I have to make my decision about that homeless person who died in the street now. It's now, now. There's no yes, get ready for the journey. Yes, and there's exactly. no, there's, le okay, maybe I'm an old folky. There's, there's less listening to, as you say, how do you listen for the long journey? So, that's the question, Donna. Yeah. How do we re-encourage listening for the long journey. I think we, we make sure that our content reaches people. You know, there's been a tectonic sh shift in our attitude towards in, in, in inclusion and, and diversity and, and equity. You know, if, if we have content that speaks to people on those stages, I do live in hope that we will have that shift as well, that people will stay the course of a story. But that's important. It's but the important. long, we're talking about the long, because I totally agree, but it's the long form. Be ready, settle down, this is a longer journey. How do, you're I saying think, it's through? I think we have to just, we have to make sure that we are doing great content, that we keep people interested. I think that's, 
people have so many avenues now to look at interests. I've always said, I don't know if I, am I competing for another theater, you know, am I, it, it, do I want them to come to my show and not this show? Or am I actually saying, do I want them not to pay for that Raptors game? I'd like them to come to this show. Uh, do I want them to not, you know what I mean? Like, is it, entertainment is different now. It's, I think we have to look at it as a, a bigger thing. People want events. They want it to be an event when they go. And, and I, we can do that in the theater. We can make it an event. I, I remember when I did Rocky Horror, which is such a, you know, fabulous show. But the event started the, the second they walked through those theater doors. That was the event, so that everything started. And that's what I mean about settling an audience. Maybe it has to start earlier and they have to give up these, you know, right. and be willing to give them up. That is what's so interesting to me is how, how we get people to just stay.